This week we'll be adding a tail to the Valentin ball. This will help explain secondary action and how something like a tail, a ponytail, ribbons, um, ears, that kind of stuff is affected by the main action of another object or a character. We're only going to be doing a tail with this one, even though this character has ears. We're just not going to worry about the ears for now. So for, let's go into the main symbol from the file that we did last time. We're just going to turn everything on and I'm going to delete out any of the reference layers that we're not using. So we're just going to leave the ball in the background. We can just turn off the view of the background for now and just only worry about the ball. Let's make a new layer above the ball. Um, we're going to name this one ref. And this is, I'm going to try to explain how I would go about it for the simplest and maybe the tidiest way to do this. Um, it really depends on Flash. There's probably two or three different ways you can always do the same thing. And it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just different people might approach it differently. So we're going to go into the character symbol now and lock all the other layers and make a new layer at the top. Now we're going to zoom in on the body of the character and let's put a red dot where we think this tail is going to connect. Now we're going to use this as a reference point. So when we go to do our raw, we see the character here. Now we can do a rough and just rough in where we think the tail is going to be for each frame. And we need to do this on the rough layer. This first frame doesn't matter too much since we don't have any of the previous frames of reference. And we're going to leave the character layer unlocked too. Let's put on outline mode. Just make sure you're drawing on the correct layer, that you're always drawing on the rough layer so it doesn't become a big mess. So each time we go to the rough in the tail, we're just drag it back towards where the previous one was. And it's so the action is leading from where that dot is, like this. And you're just gonna draw in a little arc leading back towards where the previous frame was. Try to keep in mind about how long the tail is. And maybe we should make this a bit longer. If we make it longer, it might be a little bit easier. Maybe something like this. So it's like we're drawing in the, I guess like the skeleton of the tail. Later on, we're adding the details to it. So I'm putting a bit of curve in here because we're thinking, okay, look, this is where the main action is coming from. It's following it forward, but the tail of the tail, like the tail end, I guess, it's going to curve back towards wherever it was in the previous frame. Nothing about this has to be perfect yet. We can always fix it up as we go along. Okay, and it doesn't look like there's a huge change in between these two frames. But remember that gravity is going to affect the tail as well as the connection point of wherever the tail is going. So this is the main part of the action. And it's going to lead back to the previous one. Just kind of ties in with the exercise of the dog tail wagging in place. It's just kind of the same thing, but only everything's happening in place rather than the character moving across the screen.
that's most of really all there is to this section of it. Sometimes if you're trying to go from like one C shape to another C shape for the tail, it helps to make it look more flexible if you put like an S shape in between those two. Just to smooth it out for the transition. Everything should be kind of kept smooth as possible on some kind of arc. So like for the transition here, you're just thinking about like what was the path of motion that the tail was taking? Oh, and we missed a frame, so I'm just gonna go back to this one. Gravity is affecting it here, so it's gonna come down a little bit further. Maybe start to bend there. And then it's being pulled over in this direction. And you're just kind of drawing in part of the, the motion that you're not seeing on every frame. Oh. What path did the pivot point of like this connection point take that's just going out? And it's just leading back to where it was previously. Just watch out that you don't draw this on the wrong frame. I meant the wrong layer. Like that. So if you do end up drawing paint on the same layer that symbols are on, and you want to retween this later for whatever reason, um, your tweens won't work if they also have paint on the same layer as a symbol. test it. Okay, so I just turned off the onion skinning. And then we'll just give this a watch through. I'm going to put the rough layer underneath the ball now. And then it should move nice and smooth. If you're running into any issues, just go through it frame by frame and try to find out if it's something where you accidentally made the tail too long or maybe it's not actually leading back to where it should be. Um, and if you get some nice little S curves in here, where it almost looks like an S like this, it should help make it look nice and flexible. Like this frame here we might be able to make it a little bit better. So that seems to be working and when you're happy with how the wrap looks, we're going to go inside the ball symbol, make the tail connected on the inside of the ball symbol and match it up so it reflects how we planned for the ball to move, for the tail to move. So if we go into this character symbol, we should name this stuff. So, um, we can guide that point off now, but we can keep it around just to make sure that we have uh, the tail matched up to it. And find out what this is. So that's the base layer. And now we're going to make a new layer, drag it to the very bottom of all these layers, and name it tail. Um, lock everything by holding down alt and clicking on that lock button there, except for this one layer of course. And we're going to, you can either do this as an art style brush, which you can do like this, 
Um, so, so it's good to have some kind of reference for how like the vertical because you want both of the points of the tail to match up exactly right like this um, and then you can draw on what you want your tail to look like and if you want it symmetrically you just can copy one side paste it in place tip it horizontally and then shuffle it over match up the edges. Um, let's break that. I don't really like that one, so it's okay. Fill that with color, and then we're just gonna select all this and go over to this here. Um, it says create new airbrush from selection, and we want it to stretch proportionally, but something's not right there because it's showing it up as a black blob. Try this again. So I set it to hmm. so that doesn't seem to be working right. It's normally it works. Am I not like how complicated the shape is. Okay, so you could do something like that as a tail. I'm not sure why it's filling in in black like that. Um, we're not going to do it this way anyway today. Um, I have no idea why the airbrush isn't working quite right. I've never had that problem before, but also I'm using the newest version of Flash and it's been known to be pretty buggy. So what we're going to do is draw on a tail the way that you would like a tail. I think I'm going to use the going to use the line tool um, and I'm going to select the width off of this line that I already have here just to keep mine consistent. Okay, So I'm going to draw in a tail. I'm also going to outline mode all the other layers since I want to be able to see through the character so I know what I'm doing here. Okay, so once you're happy with what your tail looks like, let's color it in. 
I'm going to select it all and hit F8, turn into a symbol. Um, make sure it's a graphic symbol. If you made a mistake, you can always go to instance of, switch it to graphic here, and then go and switch it to graphic up here, and it should fix it. And you also want it to single frame, frame one. And then we can always add new drawings on the inside of the symbol, keep it all neat and tidy as we go. So it's gonna look really weird until we start adjusting it to match that rough that we had. So we're going to go to the outside of the symbol and then go into it here, make a new layer, I meant, sorry, make a new frame and adjust this so it matches up. Um, I'm adjusting it by holding down Alt and rotating it. Also make sure that the tip of the tail matches up with this over here. Another way that we can fix this to make it easier to work with is to select everything and move this point of the tail to match up with this point. And then just move that back since we haven't really gotten too far with this yet, it's easy to fix now. So now it will just automatically rotate from the tip and you don't have to worry about accidentally changing that. Okay, so... We're going to go into frame 5 and fix that again here. You need to make a new keyframe for each one you want to be different. And it might be worth going into this one and changing the shape of the drawing. So we're just going to copy this keyframe and make a new one. We can either select everything and use the transformation tool to help curve this, or we can just draw a new one. Uh, how well that works depends on what shape you're trying to transform and what you're trying to do with it. So you can also just edit the one that you started with to make a new drawing. Or you can just make a new keyframe Take a look at what shape you had before and draw a new one by hand if that works better too. So when we go back out here, it still is displaying the first frame that we had. So just change this frame to the newest one. Um, you can either set it to two exactly or just grab this and swipe to the right. And it just will display the last frame that you have on the inside of that symbol, which also happens to be the one that we need right now. I'm going to change that to that frame as well right now. Okay, and now on the outside here, we're just going to see that we need to make a new frame here. So at frame seven, we go in here, make a new keyframe, and then we're making a new drawing on the inside here. Sometimes it's easier just to make a new drawing based off the one you already have if you're trying to keep things consistent. I'm just trying to get a straight line to work with instead of one that had so many points and bumps in it. And you can always hold down Alt and click and drag with this tool if you're looking to make a new point for a new bend in the line. Okay, and now we're on to frame 9. It's going to do the same thing again. I'm going to match it up as best as possible on this level first, and then if we need to, we can go and change the drawing on the inside.
another thing that might make this easier, depending on how well your computer can run it, is you can click, oops, that was an accident. If you're going back out to the very outside of the ball symbol, you can right click on it. And you can go to edit a new window. And we'll split this into two windows. So you can just pull this tab off. And make this window over on one side of your screen. And then you can make this one on the other side of your screen. This has in the past version of Flash cast my computer a whole bunch. It might be a little bit more stable now. It really depends. Um, also, you might need to move your timeline somewhere that you can view it a little bit better if you're doing it this way. You can just a little bit of setting up your screens. Um, and then this way you can see one view of the interior of the symbol and then on, over here you can see that outside view. Um, I prefer not to do that myself, but other people really like doing that and they find that it's really helpful. Oh, and I think you might be able to snap this right in here. There we go. So that's a little bit more helpful. So you can see here the outside view of how that looks. And then on this view, you can see the interior. And you just have to make sure they're all matched up so you're looking at the correct frames on each side. Because this one's on frame 11 right now. So if you change this here, you can tell on this view here, you can see how it's affected. You just have to make sure that you know what timeline you're viewing. Your, the timeline just changes depending on which one you're working with at the moment. I personally kind of just prefer going in and out. Um, it's a little bit easier for me to keep track of when I don't have to worry about flash crashing. But that's always an option if you want to do it that way. I think on this frame I'm just going to stretch the tail out a little bit. And now we're on frame 13 and I need to make a new frame. And we're just going to draw a new one here. It is possible to do this with the airbrush tool as well, kind of like how we did the dog tail leg. It's just your line quality will probably be a little bit not as good when you do it that way. And you might run into some other bugs where it will deform weirdly for certain shapes, depending on what you're trying to use it with. And then just keep in mind what your tail originally looked like as well, just in case you need to make adjustments so it stays consistent. Okay, so frame 15, we put a new keyframe in. And I just grabbed this frame and made a copy of it because it's kind of similar and we can just rotate it a little bit, match it up, and then I'm going to check to see if there's a drawing that might work that we already drew. I think number three might be kind of similar. So I'm going to try that out and just match it up. It doesn't really matter exactly what it looks like in the inside of these symbols. It's, it's of course best to keep it kind of tiny, but as long as what it looks correct on the outside, that's that's the main thing in the end, that it looks right whenever it plays back. Okay, 
and then there we should be more S curves. So putting a couple new points in to see if I can get a bit of a curve going this way. But I also want to smooth out those lines so it doesn't have those bumps. If it's possible to get it smoothed out without wrecking what I'm doing. If you want to take a look at where all those points are in, in that, you can just use this tool over here. I'm holding down control and then I'm just taking a look at where these points are. And you should be able to edit them a bit for how they curve and stuff like that. You can also take out points if you really need to too. And add the next one. I'm just going to grab a copy of frame one again. And then just adjust that to match up. Take a look at our other versions. I think frame two might be a closer fit. And frame two is also looking a little bit skinny. So I'm just going to adjust that and it, this will also affect anywhere else I used frame 2 previously. But I think that should be fine. I just it was looking a little off model. Okay, and now let's just match that up. This is how I do the antennae with the smiley face all the time. It, I just wrap it out on the outside. And then I fix it up on the inside of the symbol to match afterwards so everything's contained inside the head comp. Okay. I might edit this one a little bit. As long as it gets the right feeling and everything that the original sketch had. So you just want to keep the same kind of motion overall, even if there's a couple of frames that are slightly different than the original. Okay. We just ended up keeping this in frame two instead. But new one didn't turn out quite right. Okay, so now we're at frame 21. And you can always use the frame picker as well if you're just trying to sort through your different options for frames that you already drew. And by this point, we're probably be getting a lot of reusing the same frames over and over that we already drew, just since we've already done one jump at this point. So the shapes are probably going to be pretty similar.
Okay, so this one we're going to make a new version for. Just so we get that same kind of S curve. And the same with this one. It might be a little bit easier to just to redraw this completely for this one, at least for me. And if you're, if you feel more comfortable with drawing with the paint tool or just drawing freehand for all these, that's totally possible too. It might be faster than just trying to edit the original one over and over. I was just trying to keep this. Uh, like similar shaped as much as possible so that's why I was kind of just using the original as a base each time. curved one like that. So I think we're probably going to be redrawing this one too. You can also change your smoothing for um, the airbrush tool if you want right there. And of course, um, if you're going to fill this in and it's not quite working, there are settings down here where you can select close large gaps. Hopefully at this point it starts to pick up a little bit for speed since you should be able to reuse more of your previous drawings and just get into a bit of a rhythm. So it's going to look really weird on the inside here, but as long as it matches up on the outside that's the main thing.
this one here. Sorry about if this is looking a little bit confusing. Um, I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit so it matches up a little bit better for that particular frame. Checking to see if we got one that matches, and I don't think we have one that matches quite right, so we're just going to draw a new one. I think the tail went up through a little bit longer there. So I'm just going to transform it a little bit and see if I can widen it up at the tip. Just the onion skinning there. I just want to see how this is looking on the outside. Okay, and now I'm just going to go in here and make a new one. Since nothing else is looking for it for this one. Okay, and I have object drawing mode turned on, I think, which is part of the problem here. That's why it is looking weird like this. I, it's automatically grouping them. Just gonna get rid of that. You can find object drawing mode down here. You can just like, uh, turn that off if you don't want that on. Oops, and I don't want that turned on. I was just double checking.
Oh, and this one's pretty close, so we're just gonna tweak it a bit. So you want the point or the tail matching up with that sketch that we have. I'm gonna switch the frame number here so I'm looking at the correct one. And now we're just gonna match up this one. And we're almost done. I guess this one also doesn't matter too much since it's off. You can't actually see it or anything, so. Okay. So that looks about right. Let's guide off this rough. So when we play it back, then we can see it without anything in the way. And then we're just go looking to see if there's any issues with it. Which I think I've already found a few, and we can just fix these really quickly. So it's a little bit easier sometimes if you just turn on the onion skinning. You can just find like like adjusting where the point of the tail is matching up in that in each frame. Um, I think this one, the shape could probably be a little bit better. Oops. So this tail is down pretty big here. So for this frame, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. There's a few issues with the frames around here. This one, the point is off of the arc. So you can see it goes on this nice arc here. And it should be around here somewhere, but it, we had an accident and it's not. And it like dips in for a frame and that catches your eyes whenever you're watching it play back. So we're just going to correct that. Right now it looks like this tail got on this section got stuck and the rest of it's stretching from this point right there. So we're just gonna adjust this one too. You maybe shorten a bit. It looks like it got too long. And then this one doesn't match to where it previously was, it's going up out of the arc. Just gonna find out what frame we used there. So that one's frame seven. So that might be a good start. So we use frame seven. And then maybe let's make a new frame. Just fit that in. 
see if it matches with the other ones. It's always best if you gotta squish something like this too, especially if it's grammatically, just do it on the very inside of your symbol. Just because you don't want, um, if you do it on the outside and like do a whole lot of that, it will change the line weight of your symbol and it won't be consistent. And then you also will get other problems where if you do too much of that on the outside of the symbol, it, will, it won't let you draw on the inside of the symbol for some reason. It's just some kind of flash bug. That should work a little bit better now. And that's pretty normal with any animation you do. You work on something for a bit and then you go back and make some corrections and then work on it and go, oh, I see something else. I think I'll make a correction to that. So it's, don't get discouraged if you find out that something could have been better or you realize later on that you want to change something. And now our animal hops across the stage. I'm not really sure if that's a dog fox or what that is anymore, but it seems to work. Anyway, that's it for your secondary action. If you have any comments, questions, tutorial requests, please let me know in the comment section. If you have any more questions about what you can apply this to, or you wanted a different tutorial about something similar to help you understand it, just give me a heads up and I'll see what I can do. And feel free to subscribe for more tutorials. Um, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.